Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another running session. Now I'm going to cut straight to the chase today because I think really the title and thumbnail will have said it all. So yes, today I'm going to be doing a big A4 running session. Well, not a big running session, but just a, a normal size running session with just A4s. Now I can't believe I've not done this before because obviously the A4s are probably the most famous class of British steam locomotive ever. I did do a running session with the Coronations, which is similar of course. Well, they are. They look a bit similar, I suppose. Um, but I've never done one with the A4s before, so I thought, you know, that's a little bit of a sin. Let's do that today. So I've chosen six of them. I hope you're going to have a really good time today because obviously the A4s are absolutely beautiful. So let's do this together. Let's have a good day and let's get some A4s running. All right, so let's get started. So here we are at the turntable then with the first three locomotives of the day and I thought I would start off with some of the more unusual or lesser seen liveries. Yeah, I wouldn't say they're necessarily that unusual but you don't see these quite as often and certainly I don't think any of the preserved A4s are in this livery except possibly the BR blue one there but certainly the silver and the LNR green are uh, definitely not preserved as far as I know. So we're going to be starting off with this one. This one is uh, Silverlink, number 2509. And all the way on the inside line, she's got some Pullman coaches, which I think suit her quite nicely. So what we're going to do is get her onto the turntable, of course, and do a little bit of shunting with her to get her to her coaches. And as always, while I do that, I'll give you a little bit of history of the A4s in general. OK, let's get started. So, as you probably know, the A4s were a class of LNER Pacifics designed by Sir Nigel Gresley and introduced to the railway in 1935. The first locomotive was Silverlink, which broke all speed records during its very first run. The A4s were made most famous by Mallard, though, of course, which is also known as the world's fastest steam locomotive, still to this day, in fact, and she achieved that title in 1938 at a speed of 126 miles an hour. And of course you will be seeing Mallard run today. So the A4s were based on another of Gresley's designs, the A1, or later known as the A3, but they were produced around 15 years previously, so the A4s, if you like, are a super updated version, although they were quite similar, as you can, uh, as you can tell by just looking at the, uh, the wheel set, for example. 35 A4s were built in total, but uh, only six of them are left, but uh, compared to other classes, that is quite a healthy number. You only tend to get one or two normally, so uh, six is pretty good. And a couple of today's have been preserved. Um, I think Mallard was, obviously. Uh, that might be all, actually. Yeah, not absolutely sure. I think Golden Eagle got withdrawn, so and Silverlink did, I think. So, yes, it might just be Mallard. Anyway, all members of the class retained their streamlining permanently. Unlike other classes, the Coronation, for example, which eventually had it removed. But, uh, no, the A4s have, uh, have had the streamlining ever since they were built. Hopefully a nice smooth coupling there. Well, I hope she has coupled. Uh, so let's find out by giving her a lap of honour with her Pullman coaches. And as always, we'll come back to her later on. There we go. Yep, yeah, I thought she wasn't going to pull them for a second there. But uh, no, she is doing. OK, let's film a go around for a lap then and we'll move on to the others. So yeah, I think these Backman A4s are actually, well somebody told me they were based on the old Trix uh, body toolings, which uh, explains why they're a little bit dated and not that detailed, but to be honest, for the age, someone was saying they were from the 70s or something like that, they're not bad are they? Certainly got the A4 shape, although obviously they're not 100% accurate. Some people have pointed out that the shape isn't quite right for an A4, but uh, to me I think it's close enough. Okay, let's bring her to a stop then. Ooh, bit of a harsh stop. Yep, all the passengers fall over. So there she is, Silverlink, and I thought it would be quite fitting to start with that one just because she was the first in real life. But now then, let's move back to the turntable and get one of the later ones out. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are back at the turntable with the next locomotive, which is in this beautiful BR Blue livery. So this is the first of two Golden Eagles I'm going to be running today. And in model form, I think this BR Blue is absolutely beautiful. I mean, just look at that. 
Um, but apparently in real life it wasn't all that practical because it got dirty and showed muck very easily and apparently it also sort of uh, faded a lot more than other liveries did. So it wasn't all that popular in, in real life but certainly in, uh, in model form up here in the loft where it won't get dirty or weathered. Uh, it is beautiful. So anyway, on the middle line, parked again very dangerously halfway down the main line is uh, her coaches and I've chosen some sort of ex LNER maroon coaches for her to pull today and I think they always look really, really nice with an E4. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's get her onto the turntable then. I've just got to turn the bridge around to meet her, so let's do that. There we go. And let, ooh, did it go all the way? Yep, yeah, I think it did. And very carefully then, let's get her on. Now this is the Hornby super detailed one. Um, interestingly, so uh, yeah, this is the most detailed one you're going to be seeing today. Right, let me move the camera then. There we go. And uh, I think I'm going to want to turn her all the way around again, like I did. Well, no, not like I did with Silver Link. So let's do that. A bit more juice then. Okay, let's get her off there, see if I can shift the focus as she goes. There she goes, a little bit of a, a struggle on that curve. Give her a little bit more power, see if we can get her around there. Shouldn't be a problem. Yep, absolutely fine. Here she comes. And uh, later on, I will ask the dreaded question, uh, which of the A4 liveries is your favourite? So uh, I'm giving you a big heads up. So uh, get deciding as you see this lot. Okay, I'll change some points then and get her over onto the middle line. Yep, so I just need to open those two. And uh, here she comes now, just past the Silver Links coaches. And if I swap controllers right now, uh, then it should be a straight ride all the way to her coaches. So we'll head down there now with the camera. Or I will. <laughs> and I'll show you the coupling and hopefully it will go okay. Whoops. Steady on. Okay, let's hope she's coupled. Shall we just double check? Yep, she's coupled. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is bring her down to the front next to Silverlink so that you can see her up close. And then before she does any more running, I think I'm going to get the last engine off the turntable and get the first three together, and then I'll do a good run with them all together. So uh, let, here we go then, let Golden Eagle take her train down to the front. And I didn't mention that she's actually pulling a sleeping train. All of the coaches here are all sleeper cars. Oh, and she's, she has decoupled, look at that. Yeah, I, I, I was wondering about that. So what I might have to do is just push her back and manually couple, just to make sure both hooks have engaged properly. Yeah, I don't know why, but it's always it's always Golden Eagle that does this. Right, well, that looks better. Uh, this is going to be a fun day then, isn't it, if that happens again? Right, well, never mind. Let's try it for a second time. Second time, or maybe it will get to third time, Lucky. Right. So far, so good. As you can see, it's a fair old rake. Yeah, quite a few of them there. Right, let's move down to the front then. Okay, well, she's still got them <laughs> for now. So everybody keep your eyes peeled as we get her running later on, uh, just in case they come off again. Because if I don't notice, obviously she'll, she'll run around the track and crash into them at the back. But uh, anyway, there she is at last. A good look at Golden Eagle in the BR Blue. And just look at the lining on there. Oh, it's gorgeous. Definitely. Well, yeah, I would say definitely that one is my favourite. Okay, back to the turntable then and we'll get yet another one off. Okay, so the last one on the turntable is another Backman one, as you can see, and it's another Golden Eagle, I think, as well. So, uh, obviously, the same logo, but in a very, very different livery. So, uh, yes, LNER Green. And, of course, I wanted to save the actual LNER Teaks for her, so here they are, just in front of the turntable, not far away at all, really. So, just a five-coach rake of LNER Teaks, which I think will be beautiful with her. So, without any further ado, then, let's get her onto the turntable, and, in fact, she doesn't have to turn around at all, so she can go straight across the turntable table which is nice for a change and it will get her to couple to those coaches straight away so uh, let's see which direction she's set to go in shall we oh forwards that's nice okay hopefully she'll do this without derailing looks okay to me here she comes and of course she's just going to want to stop after this point okay that's fine switch the point there we go change direction on the controller and uh, she should be there she should be with her coaches Right, let's see if we get any more coupling issues today then, shall we? 
Well, she seems to have gotten them for now, so... Anyway, I'll leave... Oh, sounds like we've got a derailed coach. One second. Oh dear, well that was dramatic, wasn't it? No Bullman in sight either. Right, looks like a bit of point trouble. And in fact, this point seems to have changed. So I don't know whether the coach derailed and changed the point. Don't know, but it can't have been like that to start with because the, uh, the coaches were parked up on it, okay? Right. Yeah, that's weird, that is. Are you sure Bullman's not around? I bet we'll see him soon. Right, let's try the loco again then. Let's see if that sorted it out. Okay, let's open the regulator again then. Ah, oh, that sounds a bit better. Of course, she's not out of the woods yet, though, because she's got to get the, the coaches across these points. And uh, historically, these coaches are horrible on points. But uh, we'll see. It is going nice and slow, so... Amazingly, it seemed to have gotten away with that really nicely. Except the loco did stop there, but okay, we're all right. Right, let's get the others started then. So I'll start by speeding up the first Golden Eagle, and we'll start her twin, the Golden Eagle in BR Blue. There she goes. And of course, the very lovely, very special Silver Link as well. Let's get her going then with her Pullmans. Get them all at a good healthy speed so that they look like they're pulling express trains, because... Of course, that's the best kind of passenger train. So enjoy the running session, and touch wood, everything will run just fine. Well, I hope you're enjoying it so far anyway. There is the beautiful Golden Eagle in LNER Green. Really, really lovely, that livery. And she looks great with the coaches, I think, as well. And there goes her twin in the blue, which I think looks equally nice. It's gonna, it is hard to decide, but I think that's my nice. I think that's my favourite. And, of course, the very beautiful Silver Link who was also a record breaker, as you know. Oh, look at that. These two must be good friends, they're running alongside each other and they have been for ages. Ah, they're split up now though. I bet they won't be when the tracks meet up again. Nope, they're still pretty much together as you can see. Yeah, goodness knows how that's working because the two lines are very different, but no doubt they'll spread out in the end. Well, I hope, you, I hope you're not feeling too sick after that train ride. I normally don't really like going backwards on trains, especially if you've got to eat. I think normally I'd be okay. But uh, anyway, I hope you're all okay. hope you all survived it. hope you've all still got your dinner. And uh, let's take these off then. I'll take them off camera. I'll take them off off camera. Oh, that's a strange thing to try and say. And I'll be right back in just a couple of seconds uh, with the other three locos of the day. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. OK, so I've managed to cram the first lot all into the sidings around the turntable, which has freed up the three main lines. So time now then to move on to the more common or better known liveries, and who better to start with than the most famous of them all. So here's Mallard, in fact this is not a Hornby or a Backman one, this is a Wren one, which means it's uh, quite old, but uh, made entirely out of cast metal, which means she's very, very heavy. 
and by extension she can pull pretty much anything you want her to within reason. So she's got some Thompson coaches and I believe last time they appeared in a video I called them Gresley coaches and a few people uh, let me know that they weren't Gresley coaches, they were actually Thompson ones. So thank you very much for that, um, you know it's always good to learn things and I'm not an expert on most things so thank you all for letting me know and as always if I do make mistakes uh, do pull me up on them because I do want to learn obviously. Okay let's get her started then, oh I just need to open the points otherwise she won't go anywhere. <laughs> there we go. And of course, her coaches are split over two sidings. So we're going to want to reverse back in after she's just gone beyond that first set of points and grab the rest of the coaches. Okay, let me switch the point. And actually, I can't remember how well these coaches handle points and things. Uh, they do have modern Hornby wheels on them. So, <laughs> yes, I suppose it could go either way, either way really, couldn't it? Ooh, that was very rough. I bet I've caused a derailment there. Maybe not though. It's looking good to me. Yep, that does look good. So here she comes, Wren's Mallard thundering down the line. And I better move and get her ready to stop at the front. But uh, there she goes. Very impressive. Okay, slam the brakes on there then. <laughs> wow. Yes, yeah, she's got a lot of grunt to her. And I don't know really how many coaches she could pull. Um, because obviously if you go too far the motors start to get warm and uh, you don't want that. But uh, yes, yeah, she's certainly got the weight to pull an awful lot. So there she is anyway, the lovely 4468 of course from Mallard, really beautiful. And she's going to be going again in a few minutes, but uh, now we have two more A4s still to come. So uh, let's get them out and let's see what you think to them. So here is another beautiful A4 in the classic Garter Blue livery. This is of course Gadwell, also known as Sir Ralph Wedgwood. And unfortunately this one used to have TTS sound in it, but uh, really annoyingly I managed to blow the chip. And it was completely my fault. I can't quite remember how I managed it, but basically what happened is I managed to uh, bridge together my DC and DCC circuits uh, while she was running. And of course she got a mixture of DC and DCC and it blew the decoder. Completely my fault, complete cardinal sin really. And uh, But you know, luckily the loco's okay. Um, but uh, yes, uh, now we know. I took one for the team. You know that's something you can't do. Although <laughs> I suppose I should have really known that anyway. I didn't mean to, it just kind of happened. And uh, yeah, pop goes the decoder. Anyway, speaking of cardinal sins, you might want to look away now if you're a diehard A4 fan, because uh, for once, I am actually going to be running this A4 with a goods train. So here she is. <laughs> Can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to get shouted at probably for doing this. But uh, anyway, she's got some tankers, and uh, really the reason is because I'm running six A4s, I'm running out of decent rolling stock. So I thought, you know, I might as well just do something crazy and put some goods on the back. Um, you know, just for a change, really. So, yes, it's not very realistic, but who knows, during the wartime, uh, crazy things happened. <laughs> That's my excuse. So, anyway, let's get her started then. Uh, Gadwell, or Sir Ralph Wedgwood, uh, their loco shared two names over its lifetime. So let's get the points open. Those, those two, yep, that's fine. And uh, let's give her some juice then and get her out of there. Whoops. Sorry about that, not a very gentle start. So here she comes, not thundering down the line too quickly because of course she's got to be careful with those volatile fuel tankers. But I'm going to get her onto the middle line anyway, so let's do that, and uh, hopefully we'll get to two out of two on the points with this train. Okay, she's approaching fast, so I better do it. There we go. It's a good job she isn't going too fast, actually, otherwise this might have been a bit of a mess. But there we go. I'll just let her clear the points, and then I'll reverse her back a little bit so you can get a close-up. Right, just shut that, and I might as well shut this one just because... Uh, the next engine that comes along is going to derail on them if I don't remember. Okay, let's bring her back a little bit then. And I'll give you a close-up of the front of the engine. So, yeah, there she is. That's Gadwell. Uh, I'm sorry I managed to ruin the decoder in there. Completely my fault, of course. But uh, luckily she still runs and she's still lovely to see. Okay, one more loco still to go then. Let me get her out and then we'll have a good run with all three. 
So this final loco brings back some real memories for me. She was the first A4 I ever bought, in fact, and uh, really she was one of the first locos I ever had. I think she was about number five I ever got, and I'll tell you the the story. Uh, basically, it was Christmas 2012, and it was that Christmas where I got my first train set. So at this point, I had the little blue 040 from the uh, blue Highlander set. I had the little red LMS Jinty, I had a B12 and my super duper Doncaster locomotive which is, uh, I think it was an A3 or something like that from the Sheffield Pullman train set or something like that and so I had those four engines and I remember my granddad saying, have you got a Mallard? And I thought, ooh, there's an idea. So I got my Christmas money and I went online and in fact I found this one on Amazon and uh, it was about £89, I think, which was pretty good, I thought, at the time. And I suppose it was, really. And, uh, yeah, I bought it, and it came. And it came, and it had a DCC decoder in it. Now, I was only running DC at this time, and I'd never really done any research into DCC. So I thought, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do with this? So anyway, I put it on the track and it didn't work, so I thought, right, okay. And then what I did was I tried my more modern controller that I got with the train set, which is the sort of modern uh, Hornby Cheapo train controller. And amazingly, she worked really well on that one. So uh, yes, my old Hornby controller didn't agree with it for some reason, but my modern one did, so I was able to run her on DC. Obviously, these days I can run her on DCC, but I thought for old time's sake today I would run her on DC. Uh, just like I used to back in the day when she was new. So, happy memories for me, that one. That is the first A4 I ever got, and as I say, one of the first Locos I ever got full stop. I think she was the fifth I ever got. So anyway, she's going to be pulling some ex LNERT, which of course I haven't had for as long as her. Um, there, I've only had those a couple of years. So, yeah, should be nice. Right, let me open up the points then, and I think I've set her to go in the right direction this time. Look at that planning. So, here we go. Little bit of A4 Mallard in BR Green, of course. Whoa, steady on. She's raring to go, isn't she? So, as you know, DCC engines do tend to fly a bit when you run them on a DC controller. But, uh, yeah, that looks good to me. So there she goes. Let's start the others then. So here goes Gadwell. Oops, going the wrong way. With her very, very naughty goods train. But actually, I think that's quite unusual to see. So, uh, yeah, full marks for unusualness, I suppose. And then, oh, just coming up by my leg. The other Mallard, this time in BR Blue. Hopefully she's just in that shot there. So here we go, let's get her started, if she will. Yeah, there we go. And for the last time, enjoy the running session. And uh, yes, don't forget to let me know which was your favourite. So I think my favourite livery was the BR Blue. But uh, to be honest with you, I think the favourite model for me has to be this one, just because it brings back memories of uh, Christmas 2012, I suppose. So, yeah, quite special that one. You always remember your first sort of super duper loco, don't you? And I think that was mine. There's Gadwell, also Railroad by the way. She's Railroad and the uh, BR Green one is Railroad as well. But they run beautifully and I tell you what, my BR Green one still runs as nicely as she did when I first got her. There we are, two garter blue ones in the same shop for you. Oh, that's quite nice to see, isn't it, that? Yeah, she's, she's super, isn't she? Really, really smart. And of course, this Mallard doesn't have the balances on the side, but I believe the Gadwell version does, doesn't she? Yes, she absolutely does, and there they are. Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed today. A4s are just gorgeous, aren't they? I really hope you've enjoyed it as well. Yep, yeah, quite a few different brands on, on display as well today, which I quite like. Oh, look at that. I hadn't planned that, but that worked out really nicely. Okay, folks, well, that is the end of the actual running session, but as I tend to do these days with the running sessions, I will show you a few honourable mentions, although, of course, there isn't that many of them today, just because, obviously, most of them have run in the session. But I think there are three which deserve a quick mention. So I'm going to do that right now. 
So uh, say your goodbyes to these lovely engines and uh, I'll put them to bed. Alright, let me show you some of those others then that I mentioned. So there you have it then, just three honourable mentions today. The one on the left there is another Golden Eagle, of course, in the LNER green, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's another of those super powerful Ren ones, but I thought, you know, I've run two Golden Eagles already, so to put three in the same video would be a bit too much Golden Eagle for one day. But uh, she's very lovely nonetheless. Then, of course, in the middle, you've got the Backman Spencer, which is totally different to the other Backman A4s that we've seen. Different chassis, different everything. But, uh, yes, he's from Thomas and Friends, as you know, and uh, he's based on Silver Link, I would imagine. So, uh, yeah, he's a lovely A4. And then, of course, on the right-hand side, we've got Sir Nigel Gresley, which is a name that hasn't appeared in the video at all so far today, um, at least not on a loco. Number 4498 in the Garter Blue, of course. She's an old tender-driven one, but uh, she's very lovely nonetheless, as you can see. So, there you go, three more A4s which gives us nine in total for the day anyway folks really hope you enjoyed that if you did as always feel free to leave a like or even a comment because i do love it when you guys get in touch but uh, i think that's all i've got to say so thank you all for your company i really hope you enjoyed it and i will see you all very very soon all right cheers everybody